is very culturally confused. Imagine that in a marriage. looking for a funny video stereotyping what it's like to be married to a German, well then, this video might not be right for you. Because I am truly going to open up and get a little emotional and explain to you what honestly has been the absolute hardest part for me being married to a German. I mean, sure, you can expect your German partner to be punctual. Mine's not. You can expect them to be tidy and organized and efficient. Mine's definitely not. And maybe you can expect them to be direct, but if you're anything like me, you're going to get used to it and you're going to grow to absolutely love the honesty. However, these are just silly stereotypes. There are things that I'm sure you will be able to get past. I'm not saying that those aren't hard points being married to a German. I'm just saying they're not the hardest thing to live with. So what really is the hardest part about being married to a German then? Full disclosure, this is my experience with my German husband. So yes, many people are going to have different experiences, but I think there's actually gonna be a lot of you who understand my situation and can totally relate. Also, before we get emotional, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video to support me. Help me grow on YouTube. This has been a passion project for me for a very long time and is the aspect of my business that I get excited about every single day. To get started, there are always going to be these initial roadblocks that you and your intercultural partner experience, of course. But when you're so passionately in love at this stage in your relationship, sometimes it doesn't really matter what comes your way, you're just gonna get through it. A lot of you actually asked me, how did my husband feel having to be my translator all the time, having to help me through all of the paperwork? It was actually just as hard for him as it was for me. Hence why I created the Life in Germany Welcome Program. Nonetheless, my husband gladly coped with the fact that he was gonna have to pick up the phone, talk to the accountant or the Finanzamt for me, or figure out our electricity bills because I just couldn't figure out all of this German jargon yet. And every once in a while, he still has to do it for me and I can tell that it's not his favorite thing to do, but he kind of just swallowed it and takes it realizing that I moved halfway across the world for him of course that was my decision and I'm never gonna hold that against him but he does do a lot for me knowing that I also sacrificed a lot to be here in Germany so yes those are hard roadblocks but this is definitely the absolute hardest roadblock that we've had to go through and that we still struggle with today let me ask you this have you ever struggled with having an intercultural conversation getting totally lost in translation or maybe just being culturally confused and not understanding why that person is doing what they are. These situations are awkward, but imagine being in an intercultural relationship with somebody. Of course, they're not going to be awkward, but they can get very, very frustrating. Here's a silly example for you. Bangs in English is pony in German. Pony in English is pony in German. Ponytail in English is Pferdschwanz, translated to English, is horsetail, but Schwanz in German is also, you get my point. Things can easily get lost in translation. Or what about being culturally confused? I remember the first time I celebrated Christmas with my husband and his family, and him, his sister, and his brother got up from the table and left to go out partying with their friends on Christmas Eve. I was flabbergasted, like the one day of the year that is the biggest family celebration for us. I actually didn't know what to say. At first I was like, this is rude. I didn't think that it was something cultural. And I told my husband, I'm not leaving. Another one for me was Father's Day. Even before I became a mom and he became a dad, I couldn't believe that fathers were getting together, drinking and hiking on Father's Day. This is very different in Canada. I was very culturally confused. So while these things are confusing on a day-to-day -day basis, for many of us, imagine that in a marriage, being married to a German. I'm gonna give you guys some more personal examples in a little bit, but I wanted to answer a couple of your questions that you've been asking me lately as well. Like, what language do we fight in? This is actually a very interesting question, and it has changed from the beginning of our relationship to where we are now 12 years later. Naturally, it's very normal for someone to want to argue in their native language. We can then better express ourselves and get out out what we're trying to explain. Even after years of speaking German, I still prefer expressing myself in the English language because I just don't have that vocabulary in the German language. I also don't know if I ever will. Not that I won't have the vocabulary, but the feelings and the connection to these words that I have in the English language. However, would it be fair for me to expect my German husband to fight against me in the English language when it's not his mother tongue? Probably not. But now that I think about it, I'm so thankful that he was sweet enough to argue back 
back with me in the English language for all of those years that I didn't understand a word of German. We actually very, very, very rarely argue or fight. We're kind of those people like when we get upset, we just leave. We go on a walk, we come back, everything's good. But occasionally we need to battle it out. We need to talk about it. And now we have this incredible mix. I know fighting is not good, it doesn't feel good, but this mix of conversation that we have is exhilarating. We are bashing around a mix of me yelling in English and him yelling in German and me switching back to German because I can better explain something in German for this one sentence and then switching back to English. And although that sounds exhausting, it actually feels so natural for us to do this because you're just expressing the way you feel in any language that feels comfortable for you. And by doing this, this has allowed us to really break down the these barriers that we used to have and these frustrations that he used to have having to only speak the English language with me and has allowed us to find new ways to foster our understanding and our empathy for one another. If you have stories like this too, I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. You know those aha moments where you realize you might not have mastered the language yet. Clearly I'm not fighting in the German language. I'm still arguing in English. However, you're at a point in your relationship with language learning that you have just mastered a huge step. You've just had a language win. And if you want more language wins, with the help of today's sponsor and our long-term partner Lingoda, they want to help you also build these kinds of relationships beyond borders too. And not just with the German language, but you can also learn English, English business, French, and Spanish on Lingoda too. So if you already want to be making some amazing intercultural relationships, well, Lingoda actually has a social learners plan where you are then teamed up with a class of up to five students and a native speaking teacher to learn a language. Who knows? Maybe you'll even meet the love of your life. It's almost Valentine's Day. I have to be cheesy. Anyway, these group classes started around eight euros and 50 cents per class, but if you're more of an individual learner and you want to do more one-on-one -on -one classes, they have that too. They start at 19 euros per class. In both cases, as you might remember me talking about my previous Lingoda experiences, all of their classes are run via Zoom, and these online classes are held for one hour long. You can also pick the time of your class literally 24-7, even in the middle of the night, because all of their classes are led by native speaking teachers who are actually living all over the world, which means you can get personalized real-time feedback on your language skills whenever you need it. You can then commit to 5, 12, 20, or 40 classes per month and also change or cancel your plan at any time. And for those of you who hold an importance for following the CEFR framework, well, Lingoda's curriculum is designed by language experts. They do cover all of the main elements here so that it does match up with the CEFR framework too. So if you want to give it a try, I can highly recommend them from my own personal experience, you can jump on board for one of their free trials. They offer a seven day free trial where you can then test out either three group classes or one one-on-one -on -one class. Absolutely free. And if you decide to stay, I do have an exclusive discount for you and I will include that discount link down below for you. This will give you 20% off your first month of subscription. And if you want my personal opinion, I personally love the Lingoda group classes because I really like interacting with other people. It calms me. It doesn't put as much pressure on me. And I love that so far all of the teachers that I've met I felt like they weren't judging me like they're always there to help and also a lot of fun so now you want the juicy gossip <laughs> what kind of things got lost in translation that have wreaked havoc on our relationship ich liebe dich for example this is a very powerful statement here in Germany ich liebe dich means I love you Aww. we overuse the term I love you in Canada all the time we're on the phone we'll be like okay hey, see you in two minutes love ya bye and my husband was actually the first one to say I love you I was like whoa premature okay but once we start in Canada we don't stop so then I was like okay on the phone love ya bye and he'd be like okay have a good day see ya we'd hang up the phone I'd just be like oh my god he didn't say I love you back. And I like, took it so seriously and so literally. Whereas in reality, in Germany, you don't say on the phone, ich hab dich lieb, tschüss. I mean, maybe you do, but we don't. At least many Germans that I know would not say ich liebe dich in a very relaxed conversation. And I have to say these translations don't happen as often for us, which is nice because that was truly one of the hardest things for me to have to understand and deal with and for him as well. But these cultural misunderstandings are still happening and 
are actually getting worse. We're in a new stage of our relationship and much like learning a new language, you might send your kids to Kita and then all of a sudden there's this huge new vocabulary that you never learned in German school. Or you're about to build a house and you're learning all of these new terms and definitions. These are very specific topics that it takes a while to learn about. So every time that we reach this new point in our lives, these new chapters, things get tough again. So we are in this new chapter where we have two kids. We are now raising two kids. One of them is going to Grundschule soon. And so we constantly have this battle at the moment between what is culturally appropriate for our children, including how much sugar they're consuming, how much screen time they have, how much time they're spending outdoors. If a kid hits you at school, do you hit them back or not? I'm not going to tell you which side I'm on and which side he's on because I don't want to get this debate too heated. You can tell me what you think down below. But as much as I'm giggling right now, we do struggle with this daily and this is often where we do find us arguing the most. I think the hardest point that nobody ever wants to talk about, the hardest thing is not falling in love, it's actually staying in love. Staying in love takes work and passion. It's not easy when you have two kids latched onto your leg or screaming in your ear and you're busy paying bills and one's cleaning the house and the other's at work and then the other one has to work in the evening because there's a client that's not happy. You're filling out all of this German paperwork on top of it because you're still a foreigner and still learning even 10 years later. I think it's quite normal that we don't feel these sparks that we once had when we first met 12 years ago back in South Africa. That doesn't mean I am not still in love with my husband. The definition of our love has simply changed and probably will change throughout the course of our life. It's not about the Valentine's Day gifts anymore. It's also for us not even about remembering our anniversary. We never remember. It's more about the fact that I look forward to having him home in the evenings. When I have something exciting or upsetting going on in my life, it's him that I want to share it with. I can't imagine my life without him. And that to me is what being in love with my husband at the moment really means. If you haven't heard of the song, Next Thing You Know by Jordan Davis, this song makes me so emotional. It's basically everything that I've explained. And if any of you are curious about our cheesy love story, I actually just wrote our whole love story over on Instagram with the wonderful woman who runs Ich Hier Du Dort. And she basically tells international love stories from around the world. Ours was just posted recently, so you can go and check that out too if you're interested. It is cheesy, but just being able to rewrite that story and think about all that we've accomplished together, everything we're currently doing really makes me excited for our lives together and our future together and just kind of reminds me okay I need to be in the now and I need to embrace now as much as I possibly can. Is that sappy enough for you? It's February the month of love and seasonal depression. As you're watching this video, we are currently on vacation, but I really look forward to your comments and maybe you'll show some of your stories with us too. Vielen, vielen lieben Dank und wie immer, bis später.